Hey y'all, this is Zen here with the Eberhard Siedler Library here at Daniels, and this is part two of our guide on how to use image-based generative AI to do concept creation. And so today we're going to talk a lot about workflow and how you actually go about this process of concept creation. So let's get into it. First off, we're going to be using today, um, we're going to be using the AI model Midjourney. Um, Midjourney runs off a platform called Discord. Discord is like a voice, video, and the text chat app, which we have running right here. And you can sort of see that you're directly messaging the Midjourney, uh, Midjourney bot to get results, right? And that's how you're doing your prompts and stuff. And then we're also using Miro, which is this board here, as a way of organizing our ideas. Um, now Midjourney is no longer free it used to have like a free trial sort of period but now it's paid it's about ten dollars uh usd a month or 16 canadian but there's also tons of like free options out there like crayon stable diffusion um and other paid options as well and so different platforms will have different pros and cons being that there's small differences in what they can or cannot do um and also differences in how like the, the quality or the sort of style of the um, images they output but the general principles of this guide are the same and you can use it with pretty much any AI out there so let's get into it so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have sort of a mock project brief so we're gonna use the project brief from architecture studio 4 and um, in this studio it's one of where students are required to design a multi-unit student residence so let's say that you've done your research as a student of this studio and you think that the correct way to develop or that you want to develop is towards something that's metabolist and you're calling upon precedents such as Nakagin capsule tower, something that's modular, prefabricated, and a couple of metabolist architects um, that you like are Kisho Kurokawa and Kenzo Tangi. And so this sort of forms a base jumping off point for our AI experimentation. Um, also, it's good to assemble sort of a mood board like this. This is not again capsule tower right there, but also just some other metabolist works, um, metabolist posters, uh, publications, drawing sets, uh, ads, etc. And these are, you know, you can look across like various different images that you might want to include. It could just be images that sort of evoke a certain mood as well, like lighting or um, materials, etc., etc. You name it. And so from here, what we're gonna do is there's two sort of ways to prompt Midjourney to generate an image. So the first one we're gonna talk about is text to image. And so here is a sort of draft prompt that I wrote up. I'm just gonna copy this, and we're just gonna pop Midjourney open over here. I'm just gonna do half half. And so on Midjourney, what we're going to do is we're going to do slash imagine and then hit tab. And that's going to be how we prompt Midjourney to create something. I'm just going to paste our prompt into Midjourney and hit enter. And that's going to start, um, that's going to start the bot, bot up. And so that's going to be our request sent through with this prompt. And it's going to chill for a little bit and it's going to generate four options. And so with these four options, you're going to have the option to um, upscale them, upscale individual images, or you're going to have the option to create variations for some of these images. So this is going pretty quickly. Um, there's going to be another option for you to re-roll all of the images as well if you just want a whole different set of different um, imagery. So here we can see these are our generations. And if you want to keep just the four block, you can keep it just copy image and then paste it. Oh. Whoa, why is it pasting everything weird? Yeah, I copied the link instead. There we go. So there we have the image. And so just mirrors is a really good way of keeping track of all your things. And then if you want to say, let's say you like option one, Right, you can do upscale one, and this is going to upscale the first image. And oh, that was fast. Wow. And I'm just going to paste that back in Miro as well. 
So this is a good way to keep track of your generations and the text that comes with it um, in case you want to talk about it later or if you want to generate the same thing or something similar. Another way to prompt Midjourney is image to image. I think this is a little bit more unique to Midjourney. Um, some other platforms won't have this. So let's say you have two images and you kind of want to mix these two images. Um, I don't need the text. So with these two images, what we're going to do is we're going to copy as image and then we're just going to control V and paste it into the text box. We're going to do the same for the next one. And we're just going to send this into Midjourney. And using these, we're going to click on the image, right click and do copy link. And that's going to be how we reference the image with our um, prompting. So when we do slash imagine, and we already have the link copied, we're just going to paste it. We're going to do comma to do a separate one. And then we're going to copy the link on this right side image and paste that as well. And so now when we send this on enter, it's going to sort of give us a mashup of both these images. And that's another way of prompting with image to image. You can do a mix of both as well. You can do image, image plus text. Um, just keep in mind that the more things you mix in, um, the more divided each one becomes. So say like, you know, if you have two images, each of these maybe contribute like 50% to your resulting image. But if you have like a whole set of like, what is this, like seven images, you might have each, each image might play a smaller role. Sometimes this isn't true and, and certain images will just have a huge effect or like a huge role in the final output. Um, but the reason as to why that is, is, is also sort of a blur to me. So you just gotta have to test it and find out. Um, but here's our output and you can sort of see how both images have made its way into this one. The orange from the poster and the buildings from Nakagin. And this is something that you can run again and again, and I think it will give you different results. It'll give you different results each time. Um, sometimes it may be drastic, sometimes not. But yeah, these are both ways to prompt Midjourney to generating things. Um, just keep in mind that with different AI models, if you choose to use a different AI model, you're gonna have different data sets that these models are built on. And so you're gonna have different results and different sort of biases in these data sets. So an example is using this prompt, you can see that I've used three different uh, AI models to generate outputs with the same prompt. So Stable Diffusion XL over here, um, Ideogram is another one, and then Midjourney is another one. And after you generate enough images, you can sort of start to get a sense of how each AI model has its own style. Like Midjourney, people usually say it has kind of a very aesthetic, aesthetic -y style like you could post this on Instagram or something um, but you'll start to get a feeling once you do enough generations um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you move across uh, AI models now another way of prompting is called permutation prompting and this is a way to sort of test multiple variations um, at the same time and so here I have three three prompts right these prompts are all the same except for the photographer. So these are photographed by three different people. And so if I were to want to say, generate these three images and test it with different photographers each time, what I can do is I can open up Interny, I can do slash imagine and paste that in. And for the photographer, I just need to add a curly bracket, comma, and place the photographers in there one, one, separate by a comma and close curly bracket. And so what it's going to do is it's going to take each of these photographers and run one generation, one image generation with each of these. So when I hit enter, it's going to ask me if I want to imagine three prompts, right? They're three separate prompts. Um, and I hit yes. And so the output, these are ones I ran earlier just to save us time but you can see that the output starts to reference the photographers, right? From um, Wayne Tom over here, here are two of his photographs. You can start to see like the lighting starts to make its way in to, to the image. Uh, Tech Lev, Lena Severin, 
the, the colors start to make its way in. And then Yvonne Bon is looking clean as usual, right? And so, just kind of want to see the result. And so you can see it's running all three jobs um, one by one. But yeah, that's a, that's a good way to sort of test lots of different iterations at once to see if, um, you know, you get to what you want. And there's lots of different ways to affect style. Like you can use photographers, render engines, um, styles, illustrators, artists, and artistic movements. And there's, there's way more out there. And so by the end of your sort of conceptual, conceptual development phase, like you might get something like this where you have a board um, detailing kind of the process that you're recording down. So maybe this is one um, sort of avenue that you're looking at, right? This is one, and then one that maybe you mix the massing model in. So what you can do is you can take images of perhaps simple images of massing models and try to um, mix that in with a prompt to try to get something out of it. Sometimes it's, uh, I, I don't think this is like very successful because it, it doesn't really match that well, but perhaps this is a lot more successful right because it does sort of reflect the massing model a bit more um yeah and then there's other ways as well like hybrid image just text-based like one image another image and then also some text right and so through all this hopefully what you get is you get some nice um final outputs that perhaps you're looking for or that they're unintended sort of like fun things that happened during your explorations and these are what you can bring to your next desk crit um, or have talks with your studio partner or your studio professor to see in which direction you want to develop, you know. And it doesn't have to, the whole image doesn't have to be reflective of it. Um, you can take just like small, certain small parts of it that perhaps you bring into your project. Um, and yeah, that's the general gist of the workflow. So stay tuned for next time where we show you how to exercise more control over image generation um, with image in painting. So see you then.